Gervais Restaurant, authentic French cuisine in Silicon Valley. The fundamental argument that uh, uh, I make and others in, uh, who agree make is that up until this time the internet has been very open. That is to say no one needed to get any special permission nor did anyone need to pay any special fees in order to try out new businesses, new applications. So the, the Googles and the Yahoos and the Amazons and the Ebays of the world didn't have to ask permission of an ISP before they could try out some of their new products and services. The proposals that come from uh, the uh, local exchange carriers here in the United States sound as if they want to constrain and limit what the consumers can do and what other uh, businesses can do on the internet. They want to be, they say, they want to be paid for uh, access to the broadband facility not only by the subscriber but also by the suppliers of service. And of course the thing is that the suppliers of service are all over the world. It's not clear how they would enforce this uh, position. I suppose they could keep a list of internet uh, protocol addresses and say only people who paid us can, uh, can send uh, traffic through from that internet address. Uh, but this will stifle innovation. It's a terrible idea because all of the growth in the internet and the, uh, of the uh, digital economy has been a side effect of people being able to try out new ideas at very low cost uh, to, to them other than implementing. So uh, it's also uh, is a, a proposal that erases consumer choice. The consumers pay for access to the broadband facility. They should be able to essentially go anywhere on the internet that they want to. And these proposals interfere with consumer choice and innovation and I think they're very bad policy. We are very open to uh, the kind of innovation that, uh, that a, an open interface allows. This net neutrality thing says you should persist in that at the transport level and the opponents to it say no, that they should be able to build toll roads that, uh, that inhibit both innovation and customer choice. Gervais Restaurant, authentic French cuisine in Silicon Valley. Well, it's very hard to say whether it will be preserved. Uh, I've now uh, spent some time in the UK where the Ofcom organization is uh, already positioned to support network neutrality and open access to the broadband facilities. Uh, there are big debates in the rest of Europe about this. Uh, in New Zealand, where I was uh, visiting last week, there's a big debate about it as well because the incumbent wants to behave the same way as some of the uh, American local exchange carriers and try to charge uh, extra for uh, s suppliers of broadband uh, applications. I hope that we can all sit down, you know, take a deep breath, stop shooting at each other, and say, look, we all understand that the cost of the broadband has to be paid for, so that we're not arguing over that. The question is what business models will permit that to happen, and among the business models that could be made to work, which of them contributes more to national innovation? because the innovation allows for growth in the, uh, in the uh, internet economy, so to speak. It also will permit export of services outside the country. And so small countries like New Zealand really need the ability to build global uh, information technology services because their domestic markets may be too small to sustain a great deal of that business. But as soon as you reach out to the rest of the world, uh, you have a business base which is more significant. We've seen that successfully work in Ireland and also in India, just to name two examples. Are you surprised by this uh, telco uh, strategy? I mean, having worked at MCI and at WorldCom, uh, well, I, I should tell you that uh, working at MCI in particular, uh, we try to forget about the WorldCom situation, but uh, working for an internet exchange carrier, we were very much opposed to many of the positions taken by the local exchange carriers. So I'm not surprised at all. Once you're a monopoly, uh, you tend not to want to lose the monopoly. It's a very easy position to, to take. Uh, but it may have nationally bad consequences. And so it's the sort of thing where public policy and public welfare, public interest, need to be balanced against a corporate interest, uh, which uh, may not be in the national uh, interest. You mentioned that Google could afford to actually pay uh, this surcharge uh, to this uh, local exchange carrier. Do you think that Google can also afford to actually build its own network? I don't think that Google could afford to build a, a global network for the rest of the world. I mean, we, we may be a successful company, but we're not that successful. Uh, it will take uh, a lot of investment. 
so Google would much rather have uh, business models that allow everyone to benefit from broadband facilities. The only reason that we're so uh, strongly opposed to this uh, or in favor of net neutrality is that we believe that there will be more business opportunity for everyone, the, the carriers and the uh, online service providers, uh, by maintaining this open uh, aspect. If we do the other thing, if we, if we close it down the way some of the telcos would like, uh, you end up, in a sense, rebuilding the cable system with the premium channels and things like that. And that's quite limiting in terms of uh, new applications on the net. Gervais Restaurant, authentic French cuisine in Silicon Valley.